Squids are weird creatures of the ocean. Though they are invertebrates, they have a complex nervous system with high intelligence and advanced eyes with no blind spots. This design is actually better than our eyes. These gelatinous cephalopods have brains like donuts, eyes like a camera, tentacles like snakes, beaks like parrots, bodies like, what can we call it? A rocket launcher with fins maybe, I don't know. But they mainly use this fin for steering. By the way, this is not the head, it's the main body. Many people get confused about this. This is actually the head part. You can see this image as a reference. So technically, they move backwards, at least I think that way. These all weird features put them on the list of aliens on Earth. But the feature that got me was their size. Squids come in very different configurations. Surface-dwelling squids can be less than an inch long, some are a meter long, and some that live in no light zone are massive, like a kraken. Yup, and the reason is, the deeper you go, the weirder the animals get. Since they live below 3,000 feet, we haven't seen them more than a handful of times, and we actually don't know what's the maximum possible size for this creature. The largest squid ever found by humans was 43 feet long, and some scientists believe that they can be even bigger, at least 66 feet long. And that's the size of a Viking ship. Just imagine, Vikings are sailing in the ocean, and a squid appears with the speed of around 40 kilometers per hour. Its tentacles can wrap the whole ship, and its eyes are as big as basketball. Well, if that's not a kraken, then what is? Also, the stories of kraken started from Norway in the late 12th century. So, if we connect the dots, I don't think it was just a myth. Giant squids mainly eat deep sea fish and other squids. So yeah, they are kind of cannibals. They grab the prey with their circular spikes and bite with their powerful beaks and they even fight with sperm whales and sharks. Scientists have found circular bite marks on sperm whales and sleeper sharks. Also, undigested beaks of giant squid have been found in the whale's stomach too. So, there are some fierce battles in the dark, I guess. Another squid that is bigger than the giant squid is a colossal squid. These guys are heavier and bigger than giant ones, but they are not as long, or let's say we haven't found a longer one till now. As I said earlier, they live in deep, dark water, and we can only make assumptions. But they are scarier than the giants. They have hook-like spikes that can pierce the prey and rotate back and forth. It's like nature's drill machine. And these marks are seen on sharks too. But these two squids are not closely related. That's like the New World and the Old World porcupines. They look similar, but are totally different species. And we'll talk about that in the upcoming evolution video. This old man is a telescope fish, and this small kid is also a telescope fish. But they don't know each other, they just met by chance. It's a lawless ocean depth where even the light is scared to enter. So fish resembling humans is not a big deal here. Since it's dark, they float vertically like a pin and look upwards towards the surface. But why, you may ask, it's to see the shadows of animals passing by. Food is really scarce here and missing a chance could mean staying hungry for days. So, evolution made them shadow hunters, literally. When they see a shadow, they strike fast and devour that prey whole, even if it's twice their length. What? If you're wondering how can something eat twice their size, well, their stomach helps them fold the prey, kinda like this. When the adults lay eggs, the eggs float around the depth of 200 meters. The area is bright and food is everywhere, even this egg is food for some other fish. So, most of the eggs are eaten, and just a few hatch into larva. The newly hatched larva is transparent and roundish, and looks completely different from the adults. Even the scientists were confused for 80 years. They thought it was different fish species, and kept them in Rosoridae family. When it reaches juvenile stage, eyes start shifting towards the front, and many bones start to degenerate. Sharp fangs start to form and it starts traveling towards the depth. When it reaches adult stage, eyes become tubular. The fangs grow more robust with needle-like teeth. Body becomes slender, scaleless, and expandable like balloon. And the inner lining of stomach turns black to prevent the light of glowing prey from escaping the stomach. The eyes can see in almost zero light condition with super depth precision and can see bioluminescent animals from a mile away. 
They turn into silent hunters in that cold water. Once they bite a prey, the fangs won't let them leave. When it's nighttime, they surface to the depth of around 500 meters to find easy food like bristlemouth. But it's hub for bigger predators like sharks and eels. So it's either eat or be eaten situation. The up-down migration becomes daily routine and they do it alone. Yup, they don't know what friends or colony mean. Telescope fish are hermaphrodites, kind of like tripod fish. If they find partner, they both release eggs and sperm and call it a day. In some cases, one releases eggs and another releases sperm. After that, the previous male lays eggs and the previous female sprays sperm. When both finish their jobs, they leave the eggs to their own fate. Some get fertilized, some don't. The eggs float towards the height of 200 meters, and the cycle continues. This guy is a goblin shark, and if you think nightmares aren't real, well, just look at this guy. Even their babies look scary. Found in the deep oceans around the world, these living fossils haven't changed much in over a hundred million years. The skin of goblin sharks is translucent, and the blood is visible from outside. So, these sharks are pink in color. The skin becomes thinner with age, and they become pinker as they grow. But, since red light doesn't travel deep, red color appears black. So, pink suit acts as an invisibility cloak. This long nose-like blade is not a nose. It's called rostrum and is packed with ampullae of Lorenzini. It's high-tech gadget to sense electric fields of small fish and crustaceans hiding in the mud. So, they even bite undersea fiber optic cables thinking it's a big fish. Talk about a bad connection. This thing here is nose, by the way. Goblin sharks are very lazy swimmers. They have very small fins and poorly calcified skeletons. So, most of the time, they just hover and wait for the food. When the food is near, they throw their entire jaw to catch that prey. Yup, it's so fast that it's the fastest jaw movement in entire ocean. For humans, it's like shooting your teeth seven inches away from your mouth to grab a sandwich within 0.05 seconds. But they are not dangerous to humans. It's mainly because they live so deep that you will never see them in your lifetime. They eat dragonfish, rat tails, and squids. There are almost no predator of these pink sharks. So they live their life without worries, I guess. Regarding the mating and reproduction part, scientists have never seen pregnant goblin shark. But as scientists, they have to say something as they won't say we know nothing. So they say that goblin sharks give birth kind of like sand tiger shark, where the strongest kid eats all its siblings inside the womb. When the kid is born, it's ready to live its life of around 50 years as a failed chimera experiment. And the cycle continues. This guy is a sea spider. And if you hate spiders on land, well, you won't like them in the water either. They are not true spiders, but are distant relatives, like scorpions and crabs. They are found in oceans all around the world and come in variety of shapes and sizes. Some are just a millimeter long that live on surface, whereas deep sea ones are almost a meter long. But the most weird thing about them is their body, or let's say, the lack of it. Their body is so much weird that these guys are basically just legs walking on the floor. They have such a tiny abdomen that they don't have space for organs. So they keep their organs inside their legs. Huh? Yup, their stomach, intestines, and even their reproductive organs are stuffed inside their legs. Just imagine, a guy broke his hand, and the doctor said, Sorry, but you can no longer be a father. Bonk. That would really suck. And talking about sucking, Sea spiders have a pipe for a mouth. This proboscis is used to pierce soft creatures like sea anemones, sponges, and jellyfish, and suck the juice out of them. So they are kinda like mosquitoes of ocean. And since they are so thin, they don't need gills or lungs. They absorb oxygen directly through their legs through diffusion. And it works great when you are over 95% legs. When it's mating time, female releases eggs and leaves them. The male fertilizes the eggs and glues them to a special pair of legs called ovagers. Yup, they have pair of legs just to carry the babies. He carries them for weeks, protects them, and regularly cleans them until they hatch. After they hatch, they molt few times and continue to live with the dad for some time. Then they leave to start their own journey, and the cycle continues. It's the start of a new year, so 
I wish you very happy new year. And, as always, I love you guys.